Hello and welcome to this video by Studio Yorktown. In this video, we are going to have a look at the Ikebana Asset Collection, which is a collection of floral and botanical assets which have been photographically captured with realistic shadows, which you can use to create drama and add new levels of realism to your mockups. So let's get started. Using Ikebana is easy. All you have to do is choose your selected asset and double click to open it up in Photoshop. You'll see it opens up in a different folder. What we're gonna do is we are going to drag the folder in the layers palette, the entire folder, either by clicking and dragging on the canvas, or you can use the uh, right click and duplicate over to the um, document, the destination document. You can do that either ways. Personally, I like to click and drag, so I'm going to click and drag it over to our target document. And here you'll see we've got our um, asset has been dropped in. If we zoom in, you'll see that the shadows accurately collect and bounce the light that's coming through the flower, depending on where the light hits it. And all of the assets in the Studio Yorktown collection have been captured so that the light is coming from the same direction which is from top right to bottom left so you'll know that every um, asset will work together to create a consistent and realistic result so all that's left to do is to click and drag this to the size that we want and position it wherever we like in our mock-up and then we are done i'll do one more example just to show the process. I'm going to load the sword fern, which is one of my favorites. Click and drag this over to our document. And there you can see it's loaded in. Shrink this down to the size that we want. And then we are done. We just have to position it exactly as we like. One thing to take notice of is that these assets all come in in their own folder and sometimes that can get a little bit messy if you have lots of folders so just always make sure that they are stacked in the right place and that one folder doesn't come in inside another one because then it can become a little bit tricky to move them if you want to move them after the fact but once you get that sorted then it's really very easy to use and there are lots of exciting things you can do. For example, adding petals to add a little bit of uh, organic quality. Like so, and these have all been captured photographically, so there's no CGI. And we've taken a lot of care to make sure that the shadows collect the colors and bounce around so it really looks like it's inside the picture instead of floating on top of it and as i mentioned before all the shadows are cast in the same direction uh, in all of the studio yorktown products so you can rest assured that everything will come together and looks well so that's the tutorial thank you very much for watching and look forward to seeing what you come up with. Bye-bye. And here are a couple more tips for slightly more advanced users regarding editing the shadows to get them looking exactly how you want. I'm going to open this Persian buttercup floral asset here. I'm going to click and drag it over to our demo image and resize it. And then I'm going to zoom in as you can see, some shadows may have more intensity than others. If you want to edit the shadows at any time, all you have to do is open the folder for the asset in question. Then we go to our levels. And because this is working with the linear light blending mode, by adjusting the black output levels and the white output levels, we can change the intensity of the shadow accordingly. Just watch out for um, edges which might become visible around the outside because it's not using um, 
the regular blending mode. So you'd need to adjust these until they become invisible and you have the intensity of the shadow that you're looking for. So that's how to modify the shadows. If you want to, for any reason, change the uh, intensity or contrast, then you can either use curves to adjust this to your liking, or you can use the levels and adjust the contrast that way. We've also included a um, very quick little action called shadow color tint. Now, usually shadows wouldn't come in in a flat kind of dark grayish color. They usually soak up uh, colors from the either the ambient color from the sky or from bouncing around inside a, a room which might have paint or something like that. So in order to get our shadows looking um, exactly how we want them or if we have other assets which may have different shadows from different sources, we can use the shadow color tint action which has been included in the package. All we have to do is make sure the shadows uh, layer is selected. Then we run the shadow color tint action and you'll see this has placed uh, an exclusion color map on top of the shadow. Now we just have to click and open up the color picker and then usually by using the darker shades we can tweak and we can then get our shadow with any color that we want and sometimes adding a little bit of brown or a little bit of blue can help to make sure that the assets fit inside uh, your mock-up depending on the colors that you're using. So those are two little advanced tips. Hope they help and thank you for your time.